Right, it's Glen Irwin. We're at a Honda Racing UK setup. So first of all, here's my little Grom for the Fortnite supplied by Isle of Man Motorcycles. So I think their plan is to, I've signed it somewhere. They were going to sell it after the event, but it's my first TT and my first paddock bike. So I think I might buy it. One end, I'll show you is uh, the proper bikes. It's John's uh, super bike, Ben grafting away. Working hard, Ben. How are you smiling all? It's famous now. <laughs> My super bike. I can never really distinguish the difference, but biggest thing's uh, forks are bigger. Motec ECU is a bit of a giveaway. Um, Stocker runs on Honda Kit Electronics. Uh, John's, both John's bikes run on Kit Electronic. As I ride my British super bike um, on the roads as well, so. Yeah, that's exactly the bike I rode at Donington Park. Rebuilt, I hit the tower wall at Donington Park. So that's a, <laughs> that's, that, yeah, that's a rebuilt version. So yeah, from last night, the boys have obviously uh, stripped it down. I think they check everything, you know, not once, twice, but maybe three times here. Uh, probably looking for stress on the bike due to the nature of the track. Olin's front forks, absolutely mint. Olin's rear shock. Engine's all tuned in house quite quick, we can take power out of them and still have uh, quite good top speed. Saying that I am slow in the speed trap at Solby, I think I'm about 25 mile an hour off because um, I'm shit myself every lap. It's actually not getting too bad, it, the bumps were bad the first night. Um, there's a little kink before you break for Solby Bridge and the speed trap must be around there because I roll off before that. So um, I'm gonna try holding it on a bit longer. So Rob, Rob's graphing away, Rob's the next TT racer. How many times did you do the Alleman Rob? Uh, three times. Three times. A lifetime ago. Only ever had one mechanical, that was his last race. What was it you done? You told me that yesterday. What happened? Uh, shit itself, didn't I it? Didn't shut off, nothing got over by that cry. Right. RPM. Just top the valves were a bit close to one side. Right. So yeah, obviously RPM went a bit high when he launched Baller Cry. That was the end of Rob's TT career and the, the end of the engine. But uh, yeah, he's working on the super stock bike at the minute, so. Super stock bike's good. I've actually, I'm faster on this, but I've did seven laps on this and I've did 3.1 on that. Uh, when the red flags were out last night, I was only at Crosby, so. Oh, that was a long ride back, waiting on the marshals. It was good crack, uh, sitting with the marshals. You get to know some of the people, but uh, we had to follow the marshal bike back and I don't know who was on it, but he was quite quick, but I was freezing. Especially when we got to the mountain and Michael Dunlop was in front of me and he stayed behind the bubble. Even when we came in the corners, he, he was still tucked in. I was texting him this morning. It was, it was funny looking because when you're in a corner, you never are tucked in. You're always up behind the bubble. Just Michael being Michael, he's character, isn't it? So then obviously I, I, I'm quite easily led. So the next minute I'm copying him and anyone watching this must have been thinking we were two complete planks. But um, I ride the super bike a lot more, obviously, because it's my day job, really. Um, so the throttle connection is good on both, absolutely mint on both bikes. The boys have worked really hard back at base, but uh, this is just the bike I know. Uh, also, when you go to pit lane on that, you know you're on a super bike, it's very rigid. The bumps are like, everything's much harsher, but I prefer the general feeling, just due to experience. Uh, the Stalker's plusher, Stalker's a nicer ride, um, but I think, uh, I always say I've come to TT to hopefully one day win the senior and that's a bike you have to ride to do that. And I, I'm gonna, I think, we've done the right thing so far. We've really started more on the stalker as we're learning the track, but I think tonight we'll maybe go out in the super bike first. Uh, I looked at the forecast, looks dry, maybe a bit of rain around eight o'clock. So I don't wanna go out two laps in this and then on my first lap somewhere in the mountain it starts raining, you know, and again, not get a lot on that bike. So bloody hell, Rob, there burst my eardrum there. <laughs> Rob's like the silent assassin, he doesn't say much, but he's good, he's, he's good down there. He's, he's all right. Uh, There's Spider, he's my crew chief. Right. You tell a crew chief, their hands are always in their pockets. <laughs> so, he's a uh, spider, never has oil, oil in his hands. <laughs> nah, he's uh, worked, with, worked with Spider for three years now. So Northwest was our first road race together. A couple of wins there, we've won a good few BSB races. We actually worked together in 2011 in Superstock 600. Um, we had a couple of wins there and a few poles and lap records and stuff. So 
And we've had good success rate, so we're, we're continuing on, hopefully for a long time to continue. And then Chris has come in the fray, he's assistant manager of the team. He is pretending to be busy as you guys are in. <laughs> he's also uh, John's crew chief and Tom Neves crew chief from British Superbikes. So, yep, he's, uh, Chris has worked with Johnny Ray and uh, Chris, name another, you've MotoG, Scott Redden, yeah. uh, Trevor Nason, you've worked with Haga. Yeah, so the, the crew chiefs in the team are absolutely experienced. Harry's popped in, we can't not give him a mention. Harry's my chief mechanic at British Superbikes. You know who my, who my other mechanic is? He's not working, well he is working here, but he's down there. He's in McGuinness's lorry, uh, Ewan McGuinness. So John's son is my, like, uh, I wouldn't say number two mechanic, he's, he's like, Harry's lead mechanic and it's Ewan's first year, so he works, uh, maybe Harry might look after front of the bike, you know, look after rear. Rob's, Rob is our engine builder, um, but doubles up as my mechanic on the roads because he's older, more experienced. I don't want to put Ewan under too much uh, pressure as such. So yeah, that's pretty much that. <laughs> don't ask me to run you through a toolbox, right? Like, for a start, if you tell me where the spanners are, I'll guess, I, I don't know. Uh, there you go. So, I don't have a clue, and I'm also not great. I've rung quite a lot of things with them. I'm better with that end. When I use this end, when I'm trying to do my chain adjuster in the motocross bike, God love anyone that buys my motocross bike after me. Oh, horrendous. I'm not a mechanic at all. I like the data. Uh, I enjoy going through data with the boys. Rob's favourite tool? What's your favourite tool? Torque rounds. Harry, what's yours? Like, do you have a favourite tool when it's in your hand? You're like, yeah, like, I like yeah, that. Hammer, maybe. Hammer. Uh, Rob, where's your torque rounds? Uh, it's in the truck. Let's not distract them. I have to ride that bike later. <laughs> right, boys, you just keep ahead in the game. Right, Chris, you can stop pretending to work now. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we work with Owens and we'll work with the race support uh, truck, which is just across the way, but we can also change springs, etc., in here. Uh, tire warmer racks, uh, quite advanced. Um, so they, they'll bring these covers down and our tires will really, really get up to a good temperature, rims, everything warm. We use, I don't know if it's here, uh, TPMS, I think it's called, so it's like Formula One software, where Carlos, who's, he, who isn't here, will sit at British Superbikes with the screen, and it will tell him the pressure of every tire. So what we'll look at is, we can have a tire, say, set at 80 degrees heat when it leaves here. The pressure is where we want it, but it might go out on track and rise up to 90. So that pressure at 10 degrees more, the pressure has went up. So if we find it's going to 90, then they'll just set them to 90 in here. You know, so that's uh, obviously, look, it's everyone has a tire rack, but the beauty of ours being probably so good and a big investment is that we can get our tire pressures a bit more accurate because we can have our tire temperature matching what it is on track. So yeah, it's it's quite a simple part of racing, but they're the two, they're the two things that connect us to the ground, so quite important. Eduardo, so Eduardo is my electronic engineer for, Having a break. <laughs> like that. He's using this screen. So he is Takumi Takahashi's crew chief. So as you can see, we're splitting a lot of the British yeah, Superbike team. No. They double up. Ah, oh, he's on the on the phone to his family. No. His wife and baby. Hola. Española. Eduardo is uh, we bien. So yeah, he's a uh, Honda Kit Electronics. He focuses on and also on the Motec. Um, yeah, his, his eyes are square at the end of the day. So on the screens, come on over and I'll show you. So both lads are, yeah, looking at quite similar stuff. So Eduardo, engine RPM, throttle position. So he'll zoom in, so like that's quite difficult. So if he wants to look at one section of the track, he will give us a wee example there. Or you're busy, no. No, no, no. No, you're on a break. Yeah, Spider. So show them like some uh, chassis stuff. So this is a uh, throttle mapping. This is engine braking mapping. Engine braking, same thing, isn't it? <laughs> engine braking. Engine braking map. Throttle map. Throttle map. And this is data. 
So we usually look at, yeah, blue line, engine speed and RPM, uh, throttle grip. So when we see it up here, this is a good indication that we're on a long straight because we're at 100% throttle. Down here is 0%. Uh, the blue faint line is our front brake pressure. The red line is our rear brake. So you can see we use a rear brake quite a lot, trying to control wheelie. You can use it for spin, but I'm not spinning here. No, not that I know of. Uh, a little bit there. Yeah, a little bit. bit. <laughs> Where's that? Yeah. It's harder because if you zoom right out to show us a complete lap on this, so that's a lap. Doesn't. So he has to zoom right in to go to certain bits and then the map. Like here looks like there's no corners to there, but there, there will be, there's a lot of sets in. So it's, uh, I, if I just start at the at Bray Hill and start just going through it that way to find where I want to be because I follow the gear pattern. Oh. How long do you reckon did I fill that? Uh, one lap. Yeah, to, to analyze on this, oh, a full lap. Like if we were if we were analyzing like if we were analyzing the BSB lap to that intent, say like Donington, Redgate, Craner, Old Herpin, to that level around this whole 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 whole, whole lap, how long do you think? Like couple of hours? It's like twenty laps in BSB. Yeah. It's a lot of analyzing, isn't it? And different How do you say in Spanish? Jodidamente. Hey? Jodidamente. 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 Can you hear me, Clemson? So, you arrive. Stop the spread. COVID and all that. Who's on the wall? Ah, I bought that. There's a story behind it. There's not really a story. I won a few Northwest, so that's obviously the, <laughs> that's that's the story behind the painting. But the guy Daisy, I see him in the paddock, runs about long-haired sort of character. Um, he came up and he says, oh, "I told you I was going to do a painting about Northwest one day." I was like, "Yeah." I looked at it. I went, oh, "That is class. Like that. You want that, don't you?" And then when you look at it sitting beside Joey's, I actually don't like. You feel like your my photo should be like down here. <laughs> <laughs> Joey should be a bit higher, but that's for sale too, so I might have. They'd be nice to have them too, then my missus cracks up. There's a guy at home, Jeff Rush, does a bit of painting, and he'll get you to sign the things, and they'll either give me a good deal on the original, or if I sign like 100 prints, he'll give me the original. So you walk into my house, and it is like a bit of a shrine, but getting older, like, I'm starting to appreciate art. She bought me art for Christmas, you know, the cranes that built the Titanic. It's got me, and I was like, you know, you're looking for another pair of Valentino trainers or something, and then that turned up, but it's growing on me. Weird, isn't it? Getting old. Heads away. There's Owen. Owen used to work for Honda Hospitality, Klaus Klaffenbach. He was TT sidecar winner. It's Klaus that runs all this. But he hasn't been working with us this year. He's been partying in the Isle of Man. <laughs> Look at him. I think he's at uni. Uh, but yeah, he's back for this weekend only. Coffee duck. This is full. So much so that for me to eat, like I'd have to be really particular with times. And this is, so this would, this is actually on this event, Honda UK rather than Honda Racing UK. So it could be very corporate, it could be dealers and stuff like that. Um, like my family and that can come in and we can grab bits and pieces, but closest business in the day, isn't it? So start off here, grab your plate. So at BSB, this area is usually like beetroot, uh, quinoa, stuff like that, salad stuff, bread and oil. So here, so I think uh, pre-COVID you used to do yourself. Then after COVID they were doing it, but it's just starting to edge back in now where the fact that this is sitting here, back to normal. There's a few hard workers there, look at that. Arms crossed, look at that. Yeah, cutlery. I like that, Tabasco, put that on everything. Uh, not usually like this at BSB as an additional bit. Must be for the purity of the amount of people, so really high stocked up on drinks. And the chef walked by. Alex, come and say hello. How are you doing? So, Alex, good lad. 
But I always say I never want to work in a kitchen because fuck, you get stressed, don't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do. Part, part Especially like when it. we tell them we want to eat at like 120, for example, and or you don't tell me you want to eat at 120, and you turn up at like 115, saying I was food at 120, and he's like, you haven't told me, and then he's in the middle of cooking dinner for the entire team, and we put in funny requests like sweet potato and chicken and pasta without gluten and stuff, yeah. and your head falls off at that, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's not too bad once you know, but it's just knowing, isn't it? Yeah. Now yeah, you've adapted, like, we we'll have a good understanding now, yeah, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, wait, can we bring them in your kitchen? Is that allowed? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alex doesn't wash his hands either, Alex, so it's alright. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. There's his lovely pasta. What are we on with today then? Is uh, this the first day of the guests coming in, is it? No, I've got no guests. Uh, this is team food. Always, sometimes on a setup day, he'll make his pizzas, whereas that no half baguette pizza. So this is definitely this must be for our boys as well, is it? Yeah, it's just um, just to make nine album. Today. Uh. Um, yeah, we don't guests won't arrive till Thursday, so cool. it's just just team the next couple of days. Not easy enough looking after you boys. Not too and bad. Then it, then it gets fun. Usually you walk in here and you have that going. You have four pots going here. He's mixing sauces here. <laughs> and look. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Back to reality, right? So that's the last hour. We've probably took you around everything at Honda UK. So behind me, hospitality. We've seen in there. We've seen the kitchen. We've seen the garage. We've seen the data room. We've seen the, where we work on the suspension, where all the bits are kept. You guys have had the perfect tour and probably made me appreciate it a little bit more because I see us day in, day out, don't I? Once upon a time, I was the little kid peeping in, so that's yeah, cool. Cheers, you're up now.